In this lesson, you'll learn how to write Lewis structures using a systematic approach. Question 1 reads, write the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide. The first step to writing Lewis structures for covalent compounds is to write the correct skeletal structure for the molecule. And because carbon is less electronegative atom than the two oxygens, we put it in the central position. So I'll write down O for oxygen, carbon in the middle, and then O again. In step number two, you have to calculate the total number of electrons for the Lewis structures by summing the valence electrons of each atom in the molecule. For example, to get the total number of electrons for this Lewis structure, we'll find the number of valence electrons for the carbon atom, which is four, and the number of valence electrons of oxygen, it's six, and we'll multiply that by two. So the total number of valence electrons is equal to four plus two times six two because there are two oxygen atoms. And that is equal to 16. In step number three, we will distribute these 16 electrons around our structure. I'll start with oxygen. I'll put the six that it initially came with. And carbon came with four. So one, two, three, four. Lastly, we need to make sure that each atom has a full octet. Starting with oxygen, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. It's missing two electrons. Carbon has four, it's missing four electrons, and this oxygen also is missing two. What we can do is have these two electrons be shared between oxygen and carbon, and these two electrons be shared together. Similarly, this electron and this electron, and these two electrons can be shared. This is what it will look like if that sharing occurs. Notice that I've brought these electrons down here, and I've brought these two electrons right next to them. Similarly, I brought these two electrons over here, and these two electrons here. Now each atom has a full octet. Watch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's for oxygen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's for carbon. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for this oxygen. And normally what we do is rather than having these two dots to represent electrons, we put a line to represent that bond. Let's follow the exact same steps for question number two. Once again, we'll start by writing out oxygen and carbon. We have carbon monoxide this time. The total number of valence electrons is six plus four. So we have six plus four is equal to 10. Let's go ahead and distribute those. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This electron and this electron will form a pair. And so will this, leaving you with oxygen with these two electrons already in their orbital, these two dots representing those electrons, pulling those ones towards it, and the two electrons left. Now the issue with this is that oxygen has a full octet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, although carbon does not. It has one, two, three, four, five, six. To distribute the electrons so that both have a full octet, we'll take these electrons and place them right here. So we'll have oxygen, with these two electrons being shared and those six. Now both have a full octet. This has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this can be written simply as oxygen with three lines, those two electrons, carbon and its two electrons. Let's try doing this again for question three. And in question three, we have NH3, the valence for Hydrogen is one, so one times three is three, and the valence for nitrogen is five. We have eight valence electrons to work with. And the most electronegative of these two atoms is nitrogen. So I'll write down N and three H's surrounding it. So let's begin. Each of these hydrogens will have one electron, and that leaves us with five. One, two, three, four, five. This will be shared this will be shared, and that will be shared. So let's see if all of them have a full octet. Hydrogen has one, two. That constitutes a full octet because hydrogen only requires two electrons to satisfy it. Nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That works. And this hydrogen has one, two, and this one has one, two. Therefore, we can write this as H line N with those two electrons, another H and another H. That's the answer to question number three, specifically what I'm highlighting. And in question number four, 
we need to find the Lewis structure for H2CO. Now according to the chemical formula, hydrogen is bonded to carbon and carbon is bonded to oxygen. Oxygen is the most electronegative, so I'll write down O, and that's being bonded to carbon and the two hydrogens are being bonded to carbon. Now I've removed the lines just so that I can do this systematically. We have six valence electrons for oxygen, four for carbon, and two times one to represent hydrogen. That's equal to 12. So we have 12 electrons to work with. Let's start by filling in each of these. One, two, three, four, five, six for the two hydrogens, and six around the oxygen. This will form a bond. These two electrons will form a bond, and so will these two. Let's see if that satisfies each of these atoms as a full octet. By sharing these two, so I'll rewrite this, hydrogen is satisfied, this hydrogen is satisfied, and carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven with the oxygen, which is not good. Therefore, this electron and this electron also need to come together, like this. Notice that I've moved the electrons to where they're being bonded. And this becomes oxygen with its electrons, two lines to represent the bond, carbon, one line for hydrogen, and one line for the other. And there you have it. Four examples on how to write Lewis structures.